Welcome to From Rome Info Video. My name's Brother Alexis Bugnello, and I'm the publisher and editor of FromRome.info, an electronic journal for news commentary about the Catholic faith, uh, the Catholic Church, Rome, and Italy. And today I am doing the video for the sixth day of the Novena to St. Louis the Ninth, Crusader King. And as you know, if you've been watching this series, each day of the Novena, I've been talking about a different aspect of the heroic virtues and sanctity of this great King of France and why he is a patron saint for our days and um, why it is important um, for us to admire his virtue and to trust in his intercession. And I've talked about in the previous episodes about his his heroic virtue, his uh, outstanding humility, his uh, zeal for charity and justice, and uh, why we do novenas. And today I'm going to talk about St. Louis IX as a patron for Christian families, and especially a role model for fathers, and um, uh, a saint to go to if you have problems in your family or you didn't have good and loving parents uh, when you need help of any all kinds. And um, so let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be recreated and thou shalt renew the faith, face of the earth. Amen. And uh, today when I said that prayer to the Holy Spirit, I said recreated because I want to emphasize the fact that grace not only can build on nature, as we've been talking about with the life of St. Louis the Ninth, but it can rebuild and repair um, uh, nature, which can go awry or get misled through sins. And this is important for families because <clears throat> there's sin in all families, <clears throat> except the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And uh, we are victims of that, and we victimize one another in our families by our sins. Um, how often do we say that we're sorry? How often uh, do we try to make amends? And um, I mentioned before how St. Louis the Ninth went to great lengths to make peace, even with his relatives in England who were at war with him. So the war between members of the family can be intense, but it's probably not as intense as when Henry III went to war with Louis IX and thousands of people were killed in France and, <coughs> and hundreds of square miles were being, you know, under armed occupation or crops being burnt or cities being sieged and things like that. So if you think you have it bad in your family, <laughs> St. Louis IX had it worse in his, and yet he, he, he made peace and he strove to make peace. But today I want to talk especially about how he's a great patron of fathers. <clears throat> and all over the internet, in the English language, you can find St. Louis IX's last instructions to his eldest son. And these he left for his son Philip, who would succeed him. And he probably left these instructions because he was warned by the Holy Spirit prophetically that his son would need some good advice because his son Philip went on to do the most horrible things um, uh, 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 against the Pope, against the Knight Templars, against Christians, against the Catholic religion. He wasn't a heretic, but he really pushed the limits. And uh, he was a scandal, he, he, so much so that some of his henchmen beat Boniface VIII uh, so badly that Boniface VIII died. And uh, it was a shock to the Christian world. It was the first time in like a thousand years that a pope had been beaten to death by a, a, civil, a civil ruler. So St. Louis perhaps was inspired to give this advice. His son didn't really take it, but we can take it and we can listen to it in our families. And if you're a father, think about this advice. I'm going to read some of it. There's just, it's, there's, it's so long, it'll probably be too long for a video. You can find it everywhere on the internet under St. Louis the Ninth's last instructions to his eldest son. And I'll put a link in the notes to, this, to the show page of this video so you can find the whole thing. <clears throat> Fair son, the first thing I would teach thee is to set thine heart to love God 
for unless he love God, none can be saved. Now this is the most important point, and this is what I love about St. Louis the Ninth. He goes right to the most important things first. And uh, you, it's not a question of how many prayers you say. It's not a question of how many rules you keep. It's first the question whether you love God, who is infinitely good and worthy of all love, as is said in the Act of Contrition. <clears throat> Keep thyself from doing aught that is displeasing to God, that is to say, from mortal sin. Contrarywise, thou should suffer every manner of torment rather than commit a mortal sin. And here, St. Louis the Ninth shows uh, what it is to be a father. He's handing down the good advice his mother gave him. He's handing that down to his son. And uh, this is one of the first rules of good fatherhood. If your parents taught you something that turned out to be good, prudent, sound, and wise, Teach that to your own children. Not only to love God, but also the good, wholesome traditions of your family, the rules of life, wherever they be, whether it's in morals or how to make friends or how to keep the bathroom clean, okay? This is part of what a father's duty is. A father is intimately connected with upholding the laws of God and upholding the tradition, good, wholesome traditions of the family. St. Louis goes on, if God sends thee adversity, receive it in patience and give thanks to our Savior and bethink thee that thou hast deserved it and that he will make it turn to thine advantage. If he send thee prosperity, then thank him humbly so that thou becomest not worse from pride or any other cause when thou oughtst to be better. For we should not fight against God with his own gifts. And this is excellent advice, not only for sons, but fathers themselves. So in times of adversity, be patient. You're going to teach your children and your wife a lot of virtue by being patient in adversity, trusting in God and making them understand that all the problems of life are small in comparison to eternal life. And in prosperity, not becoming uh, uh, indulgent, not becoming avaricious, vainglorious, or proud from it, but thanking God in times of prosperity from whence, because it's from God all good things come. And um, St. Louis the Ninth continues, Confess thyself often, and choose for thy confessor a right worthy man, who knows how to teach thee what to do, and what not to do. And bear thyself in such sort that thy confessor and thy friends shall dare to reprove thee for thy misdoings. Listen to the services of Holy Church devoutly and without chattering, and pray to God with thy heart and with thy lips, and especially at Mass, when the consecration takes place. Let thy ten let heart t be tender and full of pity towards those who are poor, miserable, and afflicted, and comfort and help them to the utmost of thy power. So these now St. Louis gets into the basic rules for any Christian life, and that we should have a good confessor, not one who excuses sin. This is extremely difficult today to find. <laughs> so um, if you find one, give thanks to God. Because I can tell you <laughs> there are monks who have searched 30 years so such a man never found one. But if you do, and if you find one that excuses your sins, don't go back to him. Um, you should pay attention at, at the Divine Liturgy at Mass. And uh, you should actually believe in your heart what you're saying on your lips. Uh, it should be a unity. It should, it's not just external devotion. And this is uh, even more important in the family. If you love your children... Don't say you love them in a carefree, cavalier manner. Say it with meaning, with purpose, with intent, and at the proper time. Don't use it like, you know, an excuse all, because then it doesn't really mean anything. Mean what you say, say what you mean. When a father does that, he's already teaching thousands of virtues all simultaneously. And uh, if you show as a father your charity towards the poor, people who are truly poor and not just people who want to hand out, then you're going to teach your children something really important about life that um, few of us probably have parents that taught us that. We learn it from the saints, we learn it from the gospel, the lives of the saints we read. But if you have a parent who, who did this uh, with prudence, with discretion at the proper time and the proper amounts, then you have a very good example because we all have sins to pay for, and by being charitable to the poor, we atone for our temple punishments. And uh, it's, life isn't just about me, 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 me. 
there are people in difficulties that we cannot imagine and we wouldn't be able to get out of. And if we can help them in any way, we should do that. Now, I could read all these wonderful counsels, but that would deprive you of good holy reading time. And uh, time to think about each of these things. This goes on for several pages, and you can find it all over the Internet. It's called instruction, uh, St. Louis IX's last instructions to his eldest son. I was reading from the version at Seattle Catholic, which is a, a Catholic newspaper out of Seattle, Washington State, United States. It doesn't publish anymore, but I used to write uh, occasionally for it, and it was, good. it was a good journal. So now let's close with our, <coughs> our, our closing prayer. But before I do, I just want you to remind you that uh, I'm doing this uh, novena to St. Louis the Ninth to encourage you to become founding members of the Pious Association of St. Louis the Ninth, which will be a religious organization where we all uh, pool our offerings to help uh, to support priests saying masses in honor of St. Louis the Ninth, asking the saint to hear our prayers, those of us who join the association. So you can become a founding member of the association by going to this website. You can see the link in the, in the show page notes and making a, a, a donation by PayPal, <coughs> credit card, Zelle Pay, or uh, a bank wire in several different currencies. And that money will go solely to have priests say mass, masses for all our intentions. It will not go to me. I'm doing this out of my devotion to St. Louis because he's a great saint and we, we need to admire him. I was just reading today, I was just informed yesterday, I should say, <clears throat> that two of the principal churches dedicated to St. Louis, the ninth in the world, <laughs> are not going to even celebrate his feast day. They're going to be closed during his feast day, which is in just a few days now on August 25th. And that is, I, I just can't understand that. So, one of the one of the one of the goals of the Pious Association of St. Louis the Ninth will be spread devotion to the saint in the church, and maybe someday get those churches open for his feast day too. So <clears throat> let's end with a closing prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O glorious <clears throat> and blessed St. Louis the Ninth, Crusader King, who was an exemplary father of a family, who left the most wise instructions for your son who was warned by the Holy Spirit of the future of your children, and who has been blessed by God to have children that reigned over kingdoms and provinces and counties uh, from your day unto our own. <clears throat> Hear our prayer and intercede for our own families. Uh, care for our children. Take care of our parents and grandparents. Help us in our needs, our studies, our work. Uh, help us in times of trouble. To be, uh, to be endure the adversity and find help. Help us in times of prosperity to remain humble and give thanks to God and keep us always open to helping the poor and the needy uh, as God makes them known to us. And especially hear our prayers for our specific needs, which we mention now. And we ask you this and all these things in this novena through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>